I'm Jason Lachlan, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get more out of your flat picking licks. I'm sure you've had this happen to you before where you have this really great flat picking lick, but you try to use it over certain progressions or in between two other ideas, and it's too long or it's too short, or you can't get it to flow into a new idea in a really smooth, connected way. Or more importantly, you don't know how to add variations to it, so you can only use that idea once and you have to move on to a new idea. I'm gonna show you how to see a flat picking lick more as a template and give you a path for adding variations to it so you could turn that one lick into an endless amount of ideas. Stick around. Okay, before we get into it, all the tab notation and backing track are available for free for this video. That stuff is down below at the link. Um, and everything I'm sharing in here is from a course I put out called Mastering Country Flat Picking. So this is all kind of the tip of the iceberg of what I get into in that course. So if you get to the end of this video and you're really digging it, you wanna learn more, you're gonna to wanna to check out the course. I'll put the link to that course down below. And please subscribe. It's one click on your end, but it makes a big difference for me and really helps me grow this channel. And I really do appreciate it. All right, let's get started. Okay, so what is flat picking? I'll make this real quick since I think most of you know. But basically what flat picking is, is I'm starting each note primarily with a pick stroke. And then I'm using hammer-ons and pull-offs and slides to add nuance and dynamics and make things feel more legato at times. But I'm not doing any kind of hybrid picking, which is picking fingers, no double stops, no steel bends, all pretty much coming from the flat pick. Now, who are your favorite electric guitar players that flat pick? So country guitarists playing electric guitar, not bluegrass players, not old-timey players, but country guitar players that play electric guitar that are great flat pickers. Um, I know who mine are, I love Kenny Vaughn, I love Vince Gill, I love Albert Lee, I love Danny Gatton, Johnny Highland's great. Obviously all these players have a lot of bluegrass influence, but who are yours? Put them in the comments down below. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take three flat picking licks and each one is gonna be attached to one of the cage shapes. And we're gonna do this all in one position so we can really see how these things voice lead into each other. I'm gonna do this in the key of A, playing over a one, four, five progression, which means I'm gonna be playing over an A chord for the one chord, D chord is the four, E is the five. So first let's learn our three shapes and then we'll take a look at these licks. So for a one chord, I'm doing an E-shaped uh, A chord here. Our four chord, the D chord, I'm doing an A-shaped D chord. Our five chord is gonna be a C-shaped E chord. There's our one, four, five. One, four, five, one. There you go. So now let's attach a lick to each one of these. And these are the licks that I share in the course. They're a great starting off point, but honestly, you could write your own licks. You could choose a lick from one of your favorite players that works with one of these shapes and use that. It's totally up to you. So for our E shape A chord, here's a lick that I'm gonna use. One, two, three, four. So that lick, you can see outlines that E shape here. A little half step approach. Walking down the Mixolydian scale. Half step approach to the three, landing on the root. So that's my first lick that I'm gonna use over the E shape here. For the four chord, the D chord, I'm gonna use a lick that also uses a flat seven. It has a Mixolydian type sound. It goes like this, two, three, four. Okay, so that one starting on a flat three, sliding into the three, to the five, six, flat seven, root two, little half step approach to the three, up to the five, and then we do something called an enclosure where I play a scale step above my chord tone, a half step underneath the chord tone, and then finally land on the destination that is the chord tone. That's called an enclosure, great way to embellish any kind of chord tones or arpeggios. So that's our lick for our four chord. Our five chord is gonna start on the five up here. So for this one, I'm doing a little chromatic connection between the five and three. Before I get to the three, I'm gonna do a half step approach into that three, sliding into it. Coming down an E mixolydian scale up to the flat seven, five, half step approach to the three from a uh, flat three. 
down to the root. You could also pick those. Up to you. So we got our three licks now, and I could play this over a one, four, five progression, and it should sound pretty good. So I'm gonna bring up a track here, and I'm gonna play those three licks over one, four, five progression in A, and you're gonna see how they all stay in the same register. They all kind of feel like they go together, but I'm gonna show you why this isn't sustainable after this performance. Let's check this out. Okay, sounds fine, right? But here's the problem with it. We have all this space in between one lick and the next, right? So there's no pulling the listener into that new idea. There's no momentum forward into the new chord change. That's a big problem. The other big problem is I have no variations to add to these right now. So once I play those three licks, what am I gonna do? Like do that again for the second chorus? You're gonna immediately tune out. Who wants to listen to the same exact thing over and over and over again, right? We have to add variations to these to keep these things interesting. Um, so I'm gonna show you three ways that you could do that. So let's do this with the first lick, this lick over the A chord that uses the E shape, this lick here. So three different approaches to getting more out of this. You could call these compositional devices. You could call them approaches. I don't, I don't really care. Um, but approach number one is to break this lick up into sections. This is very open for interpretation, but I'll show you how I kind of hear this. This is gonna give us little bits to play around with and it's gonna make it more manageable for adding in variations. So I look at this as part one, just that much. I call that part one. Part two is gonna be that little diatonic walk down to the four. Let's call that part two. Part three is gonna be this kind of enclosure around the third and landing on the root. So I got part one, part two, part three. Again, open for interpretation. You could see that or hear that a different way, whatever works for you. That's how I'm hearing it. So now I have these three parts. I can mix up how I present them to the listener. I could do it in order like I did in the lick, or I could play these things in a different order, like maybe even backwards. I could start with part number three to part number two to part number one. So I got. So here's the original lick. And that was a lick with the parts backwards. So forward, you can think of it as one, two, three, parts one, two, three, backwards, three, two, one. I could also just like mix it up, maybe start with part number two, and then go into part number three, then end with part number one. Right, and you might have to tailor these things to make them sound cooler or land on a core tone, that's fine. Use your ear and tweak them. But they give us kind of a plan of attack for getting more out of this. This is great when we don't have enough time to play the full lick over a chord change or where we want to, right? So maybe we could just play parts two and three. Maybe we just have time to play part three. But it lets us tailor these licks to work for what we're playing over, right? It's taking a first step to doing that. Let's talk about the next variation here, which is repetition. And this is one of the easiest things to get your head around and one of the easiest things to use to really grow an idea. So with repetition, I could either repeat the whole lick. So here's the lick, I'm gonna do it a couple times. Right, or I could start to repeat smaller little groupings in there. I could go to repeat just some of those parts that we were looking at. Maybe I'll just repeat the last part, part three. Already changes the way the lick feels, right? Or maybe part two. Or 
maybe part one. So I repeated part one like three times and I repeated part three twice. But I just grew this lick, right? So repeating the sections or these parts can really help you. So another thing you could do is you could go in and repeat a smaller grouping of notes. Like let's try the last three notes here. Or maybe repeat back and forth between the five and the four here. We could go in even smaller and repeat single notes. We're already doing this with the first note, but let's do it with the flat seven. That's cool. Lengthens the lick and it puts the syncopation and the accents in a different place. We could try that with the five here. Also a cool idea. So start with the whole lick, go into maybe parts of the lick with repetition, then pick different groupings of notes within the lick to repeat, and then try repeating single notes. You're gonna get so many ideas out of doing that with any of the licks that you already know. They don't have to be country licks, they don't have to be attached to occasion, but just like any of your favorite licks, try it. You're gonna be surprised with how much information you get out of one idea. Okay. Last approach here, this is retrograde. And this just means playing an idea backwards. And we do this in classical music, we do it pretty much note for note, but it doesn't work really when you're improvising and doing this for country guitar or jazz or rock or anything like that. It just, it's, it's not always a guarantee. So what we have to do is do an approximation of our lick or idea backwards, and we just have to tailor it to make sure it sounds good. So here's the lick forward. Played this like 50 times already, you know it by now. So to do this backwards, if I did this the way it's actually appears backwards, it's not gonna sound good. I'm gonna go root three, flat three, four, which sounds weird right off the bat. So I recognize that that doesn't sound great. So I'm gonna tweak it. It always sounds better when a flat three goes up to the major three. Go back and forth between the four and five, walking up to that flat seven now, and then sliding into that uh, root. I don't wanna go, which would be what that idea is backwards. Right, that doesn't sound good. You don't wanna end on a major seven. So I flipped it just like I did with the flat three and three, make it work. So here it is backwards. Forwards, backwards. Okay, now let's play one of the parts of the lick backwards. Let's take part number two. This is the walk down from the flat seven. So we have flat seven, six, five, four. So that's gonna be really easy to play backwards. All I have to do is go up the scale. Pretty simple, right? So I'm gonna play this forwards and backwards when I play this lick now. And I'm gonna also add in repetition, which means I can repeat any of these directions. So let me do this in context. Um, I'll play the lick once as is, and then I'll add in some of this repetition with the second part. Okay, cool. Again, stretching out the lick, more vocabulary here, we can get more out of this thing. So now let's bring up the track and play over that one, four, five progression in A, but instead of just playing these licks as is, I'm just gonna add in all these variations that we talked about. I'm gonna be breaking them into parts. I'm gonna be uh, adding in repetition of single notes, of whole parts of the entire lick. I'm gonna be adding in retrograde, so playing any one of these parts or the lick uh, backwards. So all this stuff is gonna be happening to make a solo over this one, four, five progression, feel more connected, have more variations, um, just be more interesting to the listener, right? So let's bring up a track and check it out. Okay, 
much better, right? So and all we did was one position, three licks. I just showed you how to add these three variations, these three devices to one of the licks. In that Mastering Country flat picking chorus, I show you how to do this with five licks all attached to the five cage shapes. And we do this in five positions. So you really learn how to do this all over the neck and just have an endless amount of ideas. Remember, go check out that course. That's down below along with the free tab, notation, and backing track for this video. And again, please subscribe. That helps me out. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you found it helpful. I'll see you in another video.